Vincerà, la Roma vincerà, e la Lazio in B presto tornerà. Vincerà, la Roma vincerà. How are we doing? The next day it feels better, it tastes better, and it's just more sensational, you know? That feeling of uh, winning derbies, that feeling of... Uh, and I've described this this entire week, but this constant feeling of... I'm superior. I'm superior than them. I can mock them. I can tease them. And I'm buzzing. I'm absolutely buzzing. Because I've missed this. Deep down, I have missed this. I've missed winning derbies. It, it was a long time. It was, it was too long. It was two years since we, since we won a derby. And it was, in fact, two years since we scored in a derby. Way too much. Um, this feeling is amazing. This is the best feeling ever. I mean, the, the next day, yet alone, the moment we win it and the moment the referee blows it, but then entire 24 hours after, um, especially being it a mon uh, Sunday, you know, you know, nothing to do all day, just reading comments of lots of tears. It's just the best feeling ever. They're the best feeling ever for a football fan. Um, but let's talk about this. I mean, this is how you win a derby. 1-0, scrappy win. Who scores the player they hate the most? I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just the cherry on the cake. The fact that Mancini scored is just that caviar. It's that caviar with butter at the start of a meal. The fact that this win wasn't a narrow win, but it gave them some hope. And then that goal that they scored was disallowed. And then only one nil scrappy win. Who scored? The guy they hate the most. A player which half of Italy hates. How? How, 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 how do you describe this? This is, uh, this is probably one of the best outcomes that we could have asked as Roma fans. Um, because if you're a Lazio fan today... You're down in the sewers seeing Roma won, winning a derby with the player you hate the most, you know, scoring against you and sending you home. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's unbelievable. It, it's, it's unreal. Rome is red once again. Confirmation. Um, and, um, and, and, yeah, let's discuss about this because I do want to discuss about the game. And um, I want to discuss a, a few things, but first of all, I feel like I need to set the like target. Now, the vlog is doing really, really well. I've, I'm so happy you guys enjoyed it. Uh, there was a problem with the rendering on the vlog yesterday. Uh, I don't know why, but there was, um, there was a problem when I was editing and rendering the video. And the max quality of that vlog was 70, 720p instead of 1080p. Normally it's 1080p. I don't know what the problem was. So it is a bit disappointing because that vlog deserved the 1080p quality. But yeah, it's a really good vlog. You guys are enjoying, loving it. It's popping off. I want 100 likes on And you know what? 200 likes. 200 likes because it's the day after. And the day after, it's like Rapunzel, Rapunzel, send your hair down the tower. It's just that feeling. It really is. So 200 likes. I want it. I want it. We want it. Mancini wants it. Um, thank you to everybody in the live chat, by the way. Um, oh, you English, says Emanuele. No, 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 Italian, Italian, no, but this is school English. Uh, Rome is red, says Vincent. Daci says Lazio rats. If they bring up the past, it's because our present is perfect. Grande Simo, ti seguo sempre. Grande Wijen Gine. Christian, uh, ASR footballer. Uh, Trenix, Nitsan, Saint, Cronky, Inis. Emanuele, Drill, Ryle. Uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, and Cronky as well. Let's um, let's discuss about this. The, the one thing which I, I, I want to start off with because it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's disgusting, and it's just a confirmation that in terms of institutions, in terms of football organizations, in terms of everything, Italy is a shit house of a place. Now you are telling me that you started an investigation towards a player who scored in a derby and celebrated against our biggest rivals by waving, waving, waving a flag, you've opened up an investigation about that when one week ago you ignored an investigation about somebody in that inter team calling Juan Jesus an N-word? You are telling me you ignored that investigation just to open up a new one related to Mancini waving a fucking flag? which didn't even say nothing serious, it was just a rat 
This is embarrassing. It is abysmal. Italy and all of these shithouse institutions, whatever you have against us, say it out loud. Say it out loud because it is embarrassing to be represented by such incompetent people in these institutions which make rules, put the money, corruption at its best, mafia at its best. It's embarrassing. It is absolutely embarrassing. Words cannot describe how disgusting it is for a football fan to see investigations being opened up because one of her players celebrated with their fans waving a flag when last week you completely ignored a, a, a simple investigation of a Cherubi calling Juan Jesus an N-word. You're having a laugh. You are having a laugh. It's embarrassing. It is absolutely embarrassing. And before Lazio fans watching this video start off with their morals going, oh, that's disrespectful. That's disrespecting my name. That's disrespecting my history. That's disrespecting my colors because it's disrespectful for your player and one of your captains, our second captain, waving a flag uh, with a, a blue and, um, and white flag with a rat in the middle. It, before all of these moral, just useless comments, just please understand that this is a derby and please understand that in, in football there is something called shithousery. If I hate you and you hate me and I beat you, of course I tease you. That's the law of a human being. If you would have won yesterday's derby, you would have done the same. So please forget about all these moral lessons because I don't need moral less lessons. You don't need moral lessons, and I'm pretty sure all Roma fans, Roma players, and the Roma board, as well as Mancini and De Rossi, don't need moral lessons. They know what they're doing, they're far more intelligent than you, you're just salty that we beat you, which is normal, because I was salty last month when you beat me. Now it's our turn to celebrate, and you can't start investigations complain just because a player waved the flag. Okay, there was a rat on it. I mean, one of your club legends was spotted yesterday in the Curva Nord wearing a Nazi jumper. I mean, why isn't there any investigation opened on that? Why, why are Lazio fans not complaining about that? Because that's who you are. That's what your ideology is. Stefan Radu. Can you, even, can you even call him a club legend? I mean, if your Lazio is a club legend, because those are the standards of club legends they have. Radu was spotted yesterday in the Curva Nord wearing a Nazi uh, sweat, sweat, jumper. There are levels to this. There are levels. There are levels. My club legend is my manager. Your club legend is a Nazi. So it's as simple as that. So enough of these morals because they're absolutely useless. Um, moving on, let's speak about the game because it's far more important than all this mess, chaos, useless chaos that is... That is um, that is going on. And at the end of the day, one last comment. These things are normal in a derby. This isn't golf. This isn't darts. You know, this isn't this isn't ballet classes. This is football, physical game, 90 minutes of adrenaline, 90 minutes of aggression. We hate each other. Bring the fight on. That's what football is about. Dybala showing his Argentinian shin pad to Gwinduzi. Gwinduzi taking a piss at him. I'm not mad because Gwinduzi took a piss at him. That's what a derby means. I'm not going to be here taking lessons to you guys to describe how much I hate Gwen Duzi. No, because that's, that, that's what a derby is. And I understand the concept of a big rival game. If I didn't understand this, then I wouldn't have followed football and I wouldn't pr practiced darts or golf, which aren't physical games, which aren't team games with no fan bases. And therefore, there are no rival shithouse moments on the football pitch. This is what a derby means. And I don't care. I actually enjoy it. Can I be honest? I enjoy these moments of fights, these moments of aggression. Everything has limits, of course, but I enjoy this because that's what a derby means. Um, so, yeah, again, enough of this. First half. In fact, no, lineup. I think lineup was good. I think lineup was good because I was, I was actually scared he was going to start Korsd up. Um, and I'm happy Chilik started because I think Chilik played a very good game. And I think Chilik deserves credit. He, again, his crossing is inconsistent. It really is inconsistent. But what I like about Chilik, which I don't like about Korsdob, is when he sprints. It, it's when he starts running with the ball. I think he does it better than Korsdob. And I've come to the conclusion that Chilik is an overall better player than Korsdob. So that's good. 
Um, so lineup was good. I mean, nothing to say about the lineup. I was, in fact, questioning the choice of putting Angelino ahead of Spinazzola in the starting lineup. But in fact, I completely agree with it. Angelino is playing phenomenally. And yesterday, I was actually I was higher up in the stadium, as you probably could see from the stadium vlog. So I got a bigger image of movements, players, and all of that. And one thing that I noticed about Angelino is that he's really good. He's, he's got a great sense of interception. He really does. He's got a great sense of knowing when to intercept the ball, knowing when to stop the ball. And, um, you know, the fact that he's the fact that he's that small, he isn't that tall, and he wins all of those aerial duels is impressive. Um, so, yeah, Angelino, nothing to say. Really happy when it comes to that. Uh, yeah, the lineup was good. Again, yesterday's game, it's just, uh, it's the derby. You know, again, there are derbies which will remain in the history books as iconic derbies. You know, you look at that 2 2, uh, Totti selfie, Totti masterclass goal derby. And then, um, and then you look at uh, you look at the five one. A lot of uh, uh, quite quite many years back, the five one of the Montella four goals. You know th those derbies happen once in a while um, because football, as I always say, is unpredictable. But generally speaking, eighty percent of the times a derby is a very close game, and it isn't a high scoring game. And I think these last three years of derbies are examples of this you know a derby is a tight game a derby is a game which no team wants to lose and therefore it's way more um, understandable for a team to prioritize its concentration and therefore its defensive structure rather than play attack 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 and score goals score goals score goals it's normal that's what a derby is uh, also you got to play with anxiety pressure uh, lack of concentration mix these together you, you have a tight game uh, so I wasn't expecting a high-scoring game. I said this in the match preview. I was, in fact, predicting a 1-0, 2-1, 0-0. Because 80% of the times, that's what a derby is about. But that's how you win a derby. Derby are decided by moments. I've been repeating this for the past 10 days. And yesterday's derby was decided by a moment. A set piece. Romagnoli, terrible defending on Mancini. Head butts it in. Spirit of Romanism. He isn't Roman, but he has understood the concept of Romanism like the best in this team. He is no doubt a legend of, um, of, of this club. With that game, with that goal yesterday, he's going to become even more of a legend. He loves us, we love him, and he deserves it. Because in these previous derbies when we were absolutely terrible, Mancini was the only one who actually put his balls in these last derbies. And uh, I bet you Mancini dreamt about scoring in a derby and winning a derby since he became a Roma player. And yesterday, you know, his goal, his celebration, you know, the bow in front of the Curva Sud, his post-match interview. I want to keep the jersey because it means a lot. It's my first derby. I will forever keep it in my memory locker room. Uh, at the end of the game, going in front of the fan, you know, thanking them all. Him and Pellegrini waving the flag with the rat on it. Uh, and then in the changing room, Roma posted some pictures of Mancini and Pellegrini hugging everybody. Mancini is really incarnating the spirit of a Roman. And it's great to see. As a Roma fan, it's great to see uh, because that's what you need. And that's exactly what decides a derby. Being more confident, wanting it more. And by the way, at the end of the day, we, we dominated. We didn't dominate yesterday's derby, but we deserved to win. You know, I've seen Lotito, Lazio's owner, go, maybe Lazio deserved to draw. I've seen so many comments of Lazio fans going, oh, maybe what, a draw is a fair result. A draw is not a fair result. We, we scored a goal. Um, we hit the post. What did Lazio do? The only real threat coming from Lazio was the first shot from Immobile in the first 15 minutes, which went back of the net. Other than that, what did they do? That offside goal was miles off, so that's not a chance. Um, you know, other than that, they, they, they didn't do anything. They have, the, they have those few chances at the end of the game with those free kicks where they could have exploited them better and they absolutely wasted them. I think, I, I think this Storby is going gonna, is gonna to push Lazio further down. I think this Storby has completely cut Lazio off Champions League train. And, you know, this is what I was saying in the preview. Whoever wins this game continues the Champions League hopes. Whoever loses this game is officially out of the Champions League hopes. We're now nine points ahead of Lazio. 
We do have a tough calendar, and I do think Lazio have an easier calendar, but Lazio is so unpredictable this season. I mean, they might win against the Aventus one game, and they might, and they might lose against Udinese the next game. They're just so unpredictable. They can't, they can't seem to catch some consistency in their results. Um, so, yeah, that's that. In terms of, um, so that's the goal. And then the second half, we, what, what I really liked were the first 15 minutes of, of, the, of the second half. The first 15 minutes of the second half is, I think, where we played the best, where we controlled the game, and where we could have scored another goal. We had the chance, El Shran, we should have scored that, but uh, he hit the post. And then after that, it was all about, you know, Lazio put their best players in. They put Castellanos in, which, by the way, if I were a Lazio manager, I'd start Castellanos ahead of Immobile every day of the week. Immobile looks hopeless. Uh, Castellanos looks more... Uh, not that Castellanos is amazing, but Castellanos, in my opinion, is more threatening than Immobile. Um, you know, I mean, first of all, Immobile is so damn slow. Um, Immobile is done. So if, if I were Tudor, I'd start to start Castellanos in these games. They put Luis Alberto in, they put Pedro in. Their quality increased, but again, they didn't create much. And then we won the derby and the celebration started. Uh, there was that shithousery moment between Gwenduzi. Gwenduzi, by the way, what a bitch. C can we all agree? I mean, I posted an, uh, an Instagram story yesterday. What a bitch. He is an absolute bitch. I, I don't tend to insult these players because, as I said before, I, I unlike many other fans who complain about these things, I, um, I understand what a Dory means, and I've got nothing against Gwenduzi taking the piss. In fact, I like that, because that's the spirit of a Dorby. But Gwenduzi is, is really a diva. Like, cut your hair, first of all, and then we'll start speaking. And, you know, that moment of Dybala showing him the shin pad of him lifting the World Cup against him, that's genius. That's a genius shithousery move. And then the other, the other, the other bitch, um, maybe I should change word. Bitch isn't isn't a good isn't a good word. Uh, the the other I I, I want to say um, the the other the other moron Pedro 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 is just Pedro is just that little kid who knows that no actually I'll give you a better example. You know what Pedro is because Pedro similar to Immobile he's done retire mate. You've got the money. You've got the family, you've got, you've got your wife, you've got food, retire. You, you know, you've got a house, you don't need to play anymore. You're done, you don't score anymore, you're not decisive anymore, and you barely get any minutes. You know what Pedro is? You know those tournaments between elderly men and women, uh, like court or chess tournaments? And you've got that, out of the group of those elderly people, you've got that, um, you've got that, that, you've got the older guy who feels like he's the best because he's got the most experience and he feels like he's the best, but he can't really be competing with the others because he's actually, he can't really hear well and he can't, can't really see well. But despite these problems, he thinks he's the best because he's won the most, he's got the most experience and therefore he just, he just pisses off. He just, he just takes the piss. That's what Pedro is, irrelevant rat who just got subbed in and started all the chaos, per pushing Paredes around. What do you want? What do you what What goes wrong in your mind? Bye, Pedro. Pedro, 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 pe. Praticamente il meglio di Santa Fe. Uh, Gwenduzi is Dybala's dog. Gwenduzi got a, the amount of hate that Gwenduzi got on his last Instagram post from Roma fans. It's not even hate. It's taking the piss. It's different. Um, okay, individual players, and then um, and then and then we gotta speak about De Rossi because De Rossi needs a big, big, big praise because he keeps on he keeps on winning. And I've read a, a very interesting stat yesterday. By the way, keep on um, keep on um, sharing your comments, thoughts. Post 24 hour comments uh, and also keep on liking the video. Uh, as always, I, I want 200 likes. 200 likes post Derby Day. Sky is red, sky is yellow. Mancho is on the top of the hill waving at us like this. And uh, yeah, deserves 200 likes. So, individual players. The worst on the pitch, I'd probably go with Cristante. But 
Not that he had the terrible game, but the problem with Cristante is always the same. That he is too slow with his transition. And he's a bit too inconsistent. Yesterday, there was a point, the first 20 minutes of the second half, where Lazio left so many gaps. Had we had the fast box-to-box -box mid, we would, have, we would have created so many more chances. But... Worst on there is there is really a worst on the pitch. I think yesterday's game was we played a good game overall. Nah, I can't pick worst on the pitch. Best on the pitch is hard because I think I have a few. Best on the pitch, in my opinion, and I mean man of the match, in my opinion, is Diego Llorente. People won't agree. But I think Llorente yesterday had a mass... No, 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 actually. Let me, let me rephrase this. Man of the match has to be Mancini because of the spirit. You know, in the first 20 minutes, he was about to get subbed off. And then, and then he scored a goal. And then post-match, he said, in these games, I'd only get off if I break my leg. And that is what you need. And, and, and just that is man of the match quality. But after him, I would put Llorente, because Llorente pocketed Immobile first, Castellano second, and Pedro third so well. Another player which I really liked, he will not get credit, because haters are going to hate, and haters are going to have this constant image of hate towards this player, because they feel like he doesn't do much. But yesterday's game... I have to be unpopular and say Lukaku played a, an immense second half. First half, he was, he, was, he was quiet, I agree. First half, he was a bit pocketed by Romagnoli. And then I think the goal that we scored unlocked his performance. But the second half that Lukaku played is... Look, I'm not going to say it's what you want from him in every game because what you want from him is goals. But if he does that in every single game and matches it with one goal... I would spend 40 million, genuinely. Call me crazy, I would. Lukaku yesterday changed the equilibrium of the game. Again, this is gonna be unpopular. People are not gonna agree with this. People are gonna hate him. People are gonna continue saying that he's, a, that he's a stranded boat, that he doesn't move. Lukaku yesterday started all the counter-attacks, won all the fouls, won so many throw-ins, which in a game like this are, are massive, and just changed the mechanism and the equilibrium up front. With Tammy getting in as well. So, he's not, he's not my man of the match. No, he's not my man of the match. But he deserves a credit. And I will say this because he won't get any credit. Because I, I've already seen so many comments from people go, uh, Lukaku was a ghost. Well, number one, you try and play. I always say this, but you try and play. Um, with, you, you try and play up front. With, with the service that Lukaku gets. Because Dybala, yes, he got that assist for Mancini's corner kick yesterday, but overall he didn't play a good game. And he didn't create much. Imagine being stranded by yourself in a derby with no support, and yet alone changing the equilibrium. I think he deserves credit. Again, do I think he'll get the credit? No, he won't. But I'm going to say it. It was great to see Tammy back. I mean, I just got... Tammy makes me happy. Tammy just makes me happy. When that speaker announced his name... And the entire stadium shouting his name. It just makes me happy. Tammy makes me happy. And I'm so happy to just get him back. Because I love that man. I love that man to bits. I love that man to the moon and back. I'd do anything for Tammy. Tammy is my boy. And um, again, God subbed in. You need to be brave to get, you know, after eight months of non-action, to get back playing in a derby. Where, you know, those ten minutes could have decided her fate of the season. Bravery, I like it, and I love you. Uh, Angelino played a phenomenal game, I fully agree. And um, El Shraoui also played a good game, in my opinion. But he had to bury that goal. With that being said, let's read a few comments, and then I am going to speak about De Rossi, because you really need that. Now, I know it's still early, and we've got some tough games over the course of April and May, but you really, really, really need to ask yourself, if you're Dan Fredkin and Ryan Fredkin, do we extend his contract? And I think the answer right now needs to be yes. It has to be a yes for many reasons. And I'm going to delve into that in a second. 
Paredes was amazing. Paredes was amazing. Plus, Paredes in these games, you know, that Argentinian Gara, that Argentinian... He's, he's just... Uh, he's just... You know, he's just the player you need in these games. Taking the piss, slight tackling, winning fouls, taking the piss with Guendouzi, faking some fouls. That's what you need in these games. Um, and yeah, Paredes is all of that in, in an image, in a person. Daniele. Daniele, Daniele, Daniele. I mean, um, look, Daniele needs to be confirmed. Daniele needs to be confirmed. Number one, because he deserves it. That's, that's the most important reason. Because he deserves it. Because he deserves it. Because having a club legend as a manager who wins a derby and celebrates in, tr in front of the Kurva Sud like he's a player, like he's the captain, like he's a fan, with that popping up vein over here, that, as a football fan, is just the most immaculate thing that I could see. Daniele isn't ju doesn't just deserve this confirmation and this renewal and extension because he's a Roma legend. Oh, well, extend his contract. He's a Roma legend. He'll never be hated. Yes, but he deserves this. Because Daniele, I've read a stat that said that Daniele De Rossi in, in his first like two months of football, you know, oh, better than him, only Di Francesco and Rudy Garcia in his first year. And you compare the teams that these two players have compared to this, this is a great team, but the two teams that Garcia and Di Francesco had were better than this team. And what Daniele is doing, how Daniele picked up this team in the middle of a nightmare, in the middle of chaos, the same day as Mourinho got sacked, where it was literally a funeral day in the city of Rome and literally only losing against the best team in Europe up to one month ago against Inter. Losing against Brighton in, in not, yeah, losing against Brighton in the most pointless game. Qualifying to the quarter uh, quarterfinals. Bringing this team two points from, three points from top four. Keeping these hopes alive. Winning a derby. We've got Milan on Thursday. You know, you know, it's just he deserves it. And he, we need stability. I'll, I'll always push this idea of we need stability. If we keep on changing manager every three years, every two years, we will never get that stability. And ultimately, we will never succeed. Because in football, stability is the number one ingredient. So, yes, I look at all these games. I look at how we're playing. I look at the fact that we're, we, we won a derby. Again, Feet on the floor. The season isn't over. We've not achieved anything. We've got Milan on Thursday. Milan are in great form. This game is going gonna, is gonna to just put that confidence in. Because even if we can get a draw, bring them to the Olympical. Nobody wants to play in this trap. Milan are living a great form. But the fact that he's brought us in a quarterfinal. So has Mourinho. Not, not to hate Mourinho, but they don't see with no experience. Bringing this team out of nowhere. Every time he speaks... It's a joy to our eyes and a joy to our just listening to him. He deserves it. And he, I'm not just saying this because, oh, well, he's a club legend. Give him the contract. He deserves it. He truly deserves it. Wait a bit because the next few months are crucial. But even if we don't get Champions League football, extend his fucking contract because he deserves it. And if we don't get UCL, it will never be his fault. And I look at these results. Again, I've always said this. I'm going to end the stream in a bit. I know, it's just post Derby. I, it has to be a bit longer because there are so many things to say post Derby. But, you know, the last thing which I'm going to say is I don't want to I don't wanna agree to this because I don't want to agree to this because I don't want to sound controversial and contradicting. And it's very hard to agree to this. But maybe, use, using hindsight, maybe when all of the hate, including me, that I threw to the Fredkins for their decision of sacking Mourinho, and a lot of the hate that they did receive, maybe, with the use of hindsight, it's easier, I understand. But maybe the choice was correct. Because do I think Mourinho would have gotten the amount of points that De Rossi did in these games? The, the answer is no. I don't think he would have. And this is not me trying to hate. This is me looking at the circumstances Mourinho was left in. And the players getting further and further away from him. And I just can't agree to this statement. So maybe after all the hate and after all the vomit that we threw to them because of their decision, what if they were right? And what if, what if, we, what if we do get Champions League football? 
ultimately, you know, a big shout-out needs to go to them. Because do we do I think we would have got a new CL with Mourinho? I don't think so. If we get UCL with De Rossi, again, long way to go. I'm not saying we will. But if we do, a big credit needs to be given to them. Again, there are going to be Mourinho divas watching this, hating, oh, you little unselfish bastard. Why are you um, throwing so much vomit and so much crap on a manager who brought to two back-to-back -back finals? Again, this is not hate. This is me using hindsight to look at the situation we were in. And look at how we've improved, we're grinding results, and the De Rossi has achieved the record points after Gersi and De Rossi in his first two months of football. It, it, you know, these are questions that need to be asked. I don't, wanna, I, don't, I, don't wanna, I don't want to bring Mourinho back in every conversation. And I agree, we shouldn't. But when you sack a manager mid-season, it's normal to do comparisons. And I think we can do comparisons. Can I know the name of your friend that is always in your vlogs next to you, the guy with glasses, uh, Roberto? Mourinho got sacked because of a derby loss. Now De Rossi deserves a contract extension because of derby losses, Vincent. I lost my energy when Mancini scored, but when Tammy got on the pitch, she gave me that energy boost. Same. I love Tammy so much, and I can't wait to see Tammy going like this to the fans. Tammy rolling on the floor. That's what Tammy brings to this team. Um, I want to see Tammy Lukaku play in front line. Mm, I bet you Lazio missed Grazie Roma. Poor Guendouzi. I don't feel bad uh, for him. Stupid. Um, I also, I'm also glad that Tammy got a few minutes. Why don't they do shit about the racism against Tammy? They're, th th that's who they are, mate. You know, that's who they are. That's what Lazio is. I said this at the start. Rado was spotted wearing a Nazi sweatshirt. I'm not making that up. I'm not making that up. Rado. One of their club legends. Rado is considered their club legend. Capitani Romanisti Legende Bandiere. De Rossi or manager. Their club legend is a Romanian, Radu. Yeah, you remember when Radu retired a few years back? All of those Lazio fans crying, comparing that moment to Totti retiring? Fucking hell. Delusional, man. Delusional. What's your thought on Luca Pellegrini? Don't care. Him and Romagnoli, Pedro, really don't care. Don't care, never care, will never care. Um, cl three clean sheets in a row. Uh, Takuya. Welcome, uh, shout out to Japan. Yeah, look, uh, Ibrahim, thank you very much for the five um, for the five dollars. The legend is back. Forza Roma, congratulations for our fans, says Ibrahim. Shout out to you, mate, and thank you for the support. Uh, I'm gonna go live tomorrow with um, a, a bit more of a talk, and we'll, we're gonna look at the league points, top four race, just to end the end Juventus because Juventus are playing. Bologna lost points, and Atalanta. I believe some people are saying they are losing one one. That's a good result. Could be a good game week. Very good game week. Uh, I'm going to talk to you soon. Um, don't forget to hit the like. Subscribe. Go watch the stadium vlog. Go show some love. Thank you for the support. Rome is red. And um, see you next year, Lazio. Bye-bye. Back in the sewers they go. See you, Mo. Out.